Blog Talk Radio. Namaste and welcome again to the Karma Cafe Spiritual Hour. My name is Chandi Devi from KarmaCafe.com and I'd like to welcome you all for and thank you for joining us. Our guest today is Chrism, um, and he, today he will talk about Kundalini and healing. Chrism is a frequent guest on our show because he is so popular, <laughs> and I'm really pleased that he can make it again. Chrism. Hello, everyone. Hello. Thank you for having me back, Shondi. Oh, thank you. <laughs> it's always a pleasure to be here. Uh, if if uh, I may, I'd like to open... Uh, this interview with a prayer. That would be all right. Oh, that would be lovely. Okay. Everybody kind of get into a little bit of a grounded space and feel the measure of love in your life. And uh, we'll begin this prayer. I surrender to love. I surrender to truth. I surrender to God. In my thoughts and actions with myself and towards others, I give my love and considerations of love towards their their well-being and my well-being and towards the highest potentials that we can achieve within the choices we make for the expression of our development towards love and loving and being loved. In the flow of my life, I choose to give health and harmony as an expression of love. I choose to have health and reflect health and happiness to those with whom I interact. I take full responsibility for my actions and my thoughts and my emotional intentions within the interactions that are expressed by me towards others and towards myself and towards God. I choose to join with divinity and offer love and accept love in the journey towards my conscious understanding of the wholeness that I am. However, a person wishes to end that prayer, so let it be done. Well, there we are. And uh, once again, I, I'm i happy to be here. And yes. is, is, is Ram and everyone with us? Um, I don't believe so, but I'm watching the switchboard. And, uh, okay. Well, then let's go ahead and begin. Uh, Kundalini uh, healing. You know, healing with the Kundalini is not a precise modality. It will be individual with uh, each person that has the Kundalini and comes into the Kundalini with their special karma. And uh, even, even when the person comes into the kundalini it is not the individual consciousness that is actually doing the healing it is the the kundalini consciousness the consciousness of what the hindu call the shakti Mm -hmm. which is another word for the sacred feminine within each person everybody has this everybody has a sacred feminine and the sacred male so this is uh this is quite common and it is the kundalini that does the healing, and, and the, the individual consciousness gets to come along for the ride, so to speak. Kundalini is an evolutionary energy that is uh, part of humanity's next step towards a luminous physical and spiritual expression. Uh, as it is in everyone, it is in, basically in our society, it's an untapped resource of uh, divine interaction within us all that is waiting to be awakened and uh, hopefully will be awakened and experienced more as uh, the information comes out. Uh, In these times, in the Western societies right now, uh, there has never been a time that is so right and so crucial for an individual and internal change of this magnitude to be explored and initiated so uh, Listen to this and listen to that which is behind your breastbone and behind your eyes and let your intuition guide you as we discuss the kundalini that is there within you right now. And I'm speaking to everyone in this audience. It doesn't matter what race you are, what belief system you are, 
uh, what uh, so the healing can refer to um, self healing as well as healing others. Yeah, well, the first thing that needs to be healed is the self. Okay. And the and the balance of the self uh, within okay. the individual. Uh, for instance, uh, holding a grudge or harboring hatreds or or things of that nature will not typically promote health in a person. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, harboring forgiveness and initiating forgiveness and graciousness and honesty and, and love for others as well as love for self typically will initiate a healing in a person. But for those people who are not familiar with Kundalini, let me give a very brief explanation of what it is we're talking about. Kundalini is very is a very powerful and transformative energy, and it's located at the base of the spine, within the last three vertebrae of the tailbone or the coccyx, and this uh, area will extend down to the perineum. Kundalini is a natural birthright to everyone, but it must be sought and nurtured often with a physical and spiritual practice. Sometimes it will come to people automatically, but most times it is required or it is, it is very uh, uh, normal to have to be nurtured from a physical and spiritual practice. Uh, with regard to healing, during the healing, the kundalini will flow through the individual and radiate outward from the individual. And uh, th this radiation, this radiance that flows from the, the individual with uh, kundalini that has been awakened is a form of a divine connection that all people have with the divinity uh, that basically has created this world, this universe, this physical plane. Typically, the individual personality, the individual consciousness, will not choose the route or the quality of the healing application unless that is you know, specifically given to the individual from the consciousness of the Kundalini. So... We do not trace or activate chakras or cleanse energetic pathways. We, do, we, we typically don't assume ideologies of expectation of where and how the energy should run as it flows into the person who is receiving a healing. Uh, the Kundalini Shakti, uh, you know, which is the feminine aspect of the Kundalini, knows we are working in unison for the benefit of another person. And uh, this is the energy that will pour from an awakened person into the person receiving the healing. Uh, this is an evolutionary process, and it is given and received as a city or an exalted skill. Uh, so many people will, will, will acquire this exalted skill through the Kundalini awakening to different degrees. Not everybody is going to be equal in its expression. Others will be will have more of a of an expression towards a different exalted skill or exalted skill set. Mm -hmm. uh, Kundalini uh, as a as a conscious form of energetic expression is a healing agent. So sometimes a vision or or a direct feed of knowledge to the to the uh, Kundalini awakened person is given for what is required at, at the particular moment for that individual who is receiving the healing. And uh, often the Kundalini will not respond at all, as the, the pain of the strengthening of the immune and other systems of the body must simply be experienced by that person who wants a healing. Uh, sometimes, uh, for instance, if we get a flu or we get a virus or a, you know, some sort of an infectious agent coming into the body. Well, that is as a strengthening for the body. That is as a as a way of making the immune system stronger. And often the Kundalini will not interfere with that. And yet, on the other hand, I have experienced it directly with myself that as I walk into you know through hospitals, which I do, going into hospitals, I'll come in contact with some pretty interesting viruses and uh, mm -hmm. sometimes bacteria mm -hmm. and uh, as soon as I f I'll feel the viral incursion happen 
and, and it will be happening. I'll feel the replication of the viral colonies. Mm -hmm. And then I'll feel the Kundalini just burst through and completely envelop that, and I'll feel a kind of like a vibration throughout my body. And mm -hmm. after that, about 10 minutes later, it's gone. It's just not there anymore. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, for some reason, I didn't need that particular viral exposure to strengthen the immune system, which really, for me right now, is being supported completely by the Kundalini. Okay, I, I give my health, <laughs> my health kudos go straight to the Kundalini. Yeah. Um, how do you, um, how would someone, say if they have a flu, how would they facilitate that healing? Well, they would Using... need their, their Kundalini activated and awakening. Right. I mean, but the, you definitely, the, you, you got to have that. you got to have that to start with. And once that occurs, it will be individual for each person. I can't, you know, I can't sit here at the table on the telephone and say, okay, everybody <laughs> is going to have this. this kind of response to the Kundalini because it just doesn't work that way. Right. We all come into this life expression with different gifts and different challenges due to our different karmas that we come into this life with. And some people need to be challenged by mm -hmm. an illness. And some people do not need to be challenged need by to that go very thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And once once again, that can be as an action of karma or as an mm -hmm. action that is needed for the strengthening of the individual within that body. So how would you um, conduct the healing if it was for someone else? Is it um, like well, hands-on? Now, that's different, of course. Now, if it's for uh, someone mm -hmm. else and, and say... Say you have to have um, you have to have some sort of a oh uh, let's see uh, some sort of a congenital uh, challenge with your physical system. It doesn't stop you from giving help and health and harmony to another person. Mm -hmm. It just you know that may be something that you may have to deal with, of course. And you can always you can always find uh, another person or yourself in your communication with your Shakti to straighten out that, uh, that, that challenge uh, if you are going to be giving to other people within the healing context. Uh, you know, it's always available for a person to mm -hmm. become healed. If they support that healing by balancing the karma, that they're coming into. Now, if you're giving another, if you're giving a healing to another person, all you need really do is stand next to that person, knowing and feeling the radi the radiance flow from from you, you know, to everyone in the room, not just the the person receiving the healing. It's it's a it, it has a radius. It's a circular expression that comes off of the person and will literally fill a room or a building or, or something of that mm -hmm. nature. Typically, I'll go into a hospital, and if I can't walk the hallways because, you know, they've got security measures now and you have to know a patient in there, I'll just go into the chapel mm -hmm. or the meditation room, and I'll just radiate the entire building, everybody, the, the doctors, the nurses, the patients, the janitors, the people visiting, the food vendors, the engineers, the administrative staff, the security staff, everybody gets it. And uh and and actually uh we've had ho we've had doctors coming into these meditation rooms who have just either made a mistake on a patient or someone very close to them has passed and uh, mm -hmm. they'll come in and they'll just sit right near you in the room and they'll just they'll just receive it. Receive mm -hmm. it that way. Chris, you you went to Brazil a few times um, to work with uh, John of God. Yes, yes. I, yeah, would I you mind telling no. us a little bit about that? Well, uh, when when people go to John of God, uh, you'll you'll he sees hundreds of people a day, mm -hmm. and uh, as you go, you'll go through. You, you stand in line, and they give you a little card. And you you go through uh, one room that that uh, is a cleansing room, and then they'll go into the current room, which the uh, which is where John of God sits. And uh, and uh, what you do, uh, if and, and he asked me to sit in the current room. So I sat in the current room, mm -hmm. and I heard uh, they want you to keep your eyes closed so it doesn't interfere with the energy that you're giving. And 
And also because people are disrobing right there as they're being healed. And, you know, it's, it's, it's just a matter of, uh, of being considerate. Yeah. Anyway, so I'm sitting there with my eyes closed, and uh, I hear the, uh, one of the interpreters say, is there a doctor in the house? And uh, I thought, oh, my gosh, you know, bringing in the, the MDs must be something, you know, that, that maybe John of God mm-hmm. is being challenged with. And, mm-hmm. and I just continued to pray for the benefit of, of, you know, what was occurring and to meditate and to radiate. And, mm-hmm. and then they said, is there a nurse or an RN in the house? And I thought, oh, no, you know, no doctors today. Oh, my gosh, you know. <laughs> and I continued to meditate. And then they said, is there anyone with any kind of medical background? And I just thought, oh, no, because I do have a medical background. And I had to raise my hand. And, and they, uh, they stood me up and walked me over to John of God and explained that uh, John of God wanted a verification from a, a medical person from the United States. And, uh, he... Uh, he wanted me to do a breast exam on a woman who was standing in front of him. And, uh, mm-hmm. So because I, I wasn't quite sure of how their expectations were in regards to, uh, you know, interacting with, with uh, giving a breast exam and, you know, with mm-hmm. so many people present, that I decided to err on the side of just reaching over her shoulder and trying to do it from that position. And, and he just laughed and grabbed my my. <laughs> <laughs> grabbed me around it, brought me around in front of her and just pushed my hand onto the uh, the uh, the breast cancer, which was there, and uh, and I did feel it. And if anybody hasn't felt breast, can- breast cancer, it feels like a hard, round rock or, or a hard, round, little tiny, tiny, uh, depending on its on its uh, size, uh, rock, mm-hmm. you know, invested into the breast tissue. And uh, he, so I verified it for him. Said yes, there is indeed, uh, you know, an issue in that quadrant of the breast. And uh, and then he took my hand off of it, and he said a certain expletive, not not a not a not a cuss word or anything, just something like bah. And uh, ten seconds later, he placed my hand back on it, and it was nowhere to be found. Oh. Uh, this happens quite commonly uh, at the uh, Casa de Dominacio de Loyola in Abachiana, uh, Brazil. Mm-hmm. And this, and then he went. He 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 got out of his chair and he grabbed my arm and he went into each of the operating rooms and he gave healings there and he uh, showed me his techniques for uh, mm-hmm. mudras, uh, hand positions, finger positions that he, that they like to do. And uh, and I had uh, you know a very positive experience down there, and and uh, I was called upon to assist in surgeries and things of that nature, and it was fine. And I did it the next time I went down as well. Uh, very good, good people there. Uh, rules that need to be followed, though. If you do go down to John of God's for healing, then you definitely need to take the rules as seriously as you would take rules from an MD in the United States. It is that kind of a scenario. Uh, so, yeah, and, and this is not kundalini healing. However, they do tap into a person's kundalini, so it does relate to our discussion today. This is uh, healing that is uh, basically discarnate, uh, entities that have been doctors in in mm-hmm. previous uh, existences uh, continue to have a desire to serve humanity, and and they are given permission to do so via a person who has given them permission to express through a living incarnate body. And this was what John of God is doing down there. Right, and, and the so, fact that he can do it. Um, well, shows that he ha- he is totally open. To- well, no, it just it shows that he has a particular skill with it. He's not completely open. It does hurt him. You know, he you yeah. got to remember he's doing this uh, eight hours a day, mm. but he can only do it. Uh, you know, certain certain entities have such a vibra- vibratory frequency that his ears begin to bleed. Wow. Uh, Things of that nature. So it, it, it is not uh, without its wear and tear upon mm-hmm. his physical systems. He can only do this three times, three days a week now, uh, and I mm-hmm. think he used to do it a lot more. 
But yeah, I went down there and and I did uh, come in contact with the various entities that were mm -hmm. working there, and I did have discussions with them, and and I was mm -hmm. asked to do certain things that other people weren't asked to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so I did that, you know, and it was uh -huh. fine. It was it was good, and uh, you know, it's all good. It's a good thing. Mm -hmm. And if people can, if people have an uh, uh, an illness that. Uh, the MDs have said, oh, this is irreversible. You better put your affairs in order. Mm -hmm. And you're not going to partake of a, of a, of a kundalini healing here or, or mm -hmm. anywhere else. And you have the, the financial availability to get on a plane and fly down to uh, Brasilia and uh, then get a, a driver to take you up to Abhijania. This is all doable. You, just, you can just go onto the website and you can look at the different people uh, that are conducting tours into the uh, into the casa, and it is called the Casa de Dominacio de Loyola, and uh, and uh, you can go ahead and experience this. Not everybody, once again, not everybody mm -hmm. that goes down there gets healed, just like an American hospital. Mm -hmm. Not everybody that goes into the hospital and under the knife of a board certified AMA MD mm -hmm. is going to get better. Right. There is no place on this earth. Where absolutely everybody's going to walk in and come out a, a healed person of the malady that they walked in with. Mm -hmm. But these are expanded opportunities for different modalities that can work in place of some modalities that don't. Right. People go down there, you know, with an illness, and uh, that the that the AMA uh, 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 modalities can't work with certain types of cancer infections. Mm -hmm. Uh, tumors, et cetera, et cetera, and so on. And these modalities will help that, whereas a chemotherapy uh, treatment might just possibly kill the patient before the cancer does. Mm -hmm. And, you know, nobody, you don't have to go down there and have somebody dig a scalpel into your head if you have a brain tumor. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you don't have to do that. You can just sit in the OR, the operating room, John of God will come in, and the healing will be given, and you can feel it. It feels like an electric current that goes through the body, especially pertaining to the area of the body where the disease is or the illness is. And uh, so, you know, that it is, it, is a, it is something that should be allowed in the United States, but I don't see that happening anytime soon. Uh, Kundalini is also something that should be allowed in the United States, and it is but not within the context or the acceptance that it is in other countries. But so far, so far, you know, nobody's coming in and saying, awakening the Kundalini is illegal, so <laughs> we're fortunate in that regard. <laughs> Sometimes I just... And uh, hard to prove. <laughs> yeah, how do you prove Kundalini? Yeah. But, uh, yeah, the... Uh, with regard to all, with regard to what I just said about uh, not everybody being healed, once again, mm -hmm. we need to go into the karma of an individual. Right. Okay. Right. Uh, people have karmic challenges that they must meet. Yeah, they yeah. must meet. They must balance these things. That's why they're in the body in the first place. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, if a person. Uh, manages to come into the presence of some of the awakened kundalini, well, that is also a karmic consequence. They had to get up in the morning at a certain time and get a certain kind of information to get into a certain place mm -hmm. uh, in order to become uh, exposed to kundalini radiance. So, some of the, some, you know, I read some of the uh, kundalini people saying, oh, I can't give a healing. It's, a, it's, it's karmically incorrect. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to collect the karma of the people I heal. And I'm just thinking, oh, first of all, it's not you healing it. And second of all, their karma does not belong to you. You have your own. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, kundalini is divine, and, the, and divinity does not make mistakes. Okay. We may not understand the, the, the formula for a person coming into the presence of an awakened person, but uh, just because we don't understand it doesn't mean that you know, there is a uh, positive or negative valuation on how that event came to be. Did, does that clear as mud? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> anyway, uh, yeah. all, you know, even though you know Kundalini is in everybody, and uh, typically it'll only activate if you're if you're ready to receive it in some way. So, for instance, uh, if a person has a comminuted fracture of the spine or some sort of a fracture of the tailbone and the spine, sometimes that can unleash the Kundalini, and once again, that is within the karmic parameter of the person that is having it occur. And uh, you know, it's it's just it's not a a uh, a, a wonderful commentary in our society that uh, you know we're not informing people of Kundalini or you know call it what you will. Uh, mm-hmm. Spiritual emergency is what the the uh, the MDs like to call it. But fine, you know, let's yeah. learn about it. Let's learn about it from all the different cultures that have it on the world, and then let's apply some of those. Some of those helpful uh, techniques, instead of just pumping people full of Depakote, mm-hmm. you know, which is typically what is happening. Uh, but continuing into the uh, into the uh, the healing, it doesn't matter if you're having strong Kundalini symptoms or not in order to feel a healing. Uh, many people have a level of discernment discernment that opens the channel of your individual guidance within to the conduct of the kundalini consciousness. Uh, With a strong flow, yes, it is easy to feel the kundalini express, uh, a healing agenda through the body. So, for instance, your hands get really, really hot, and and in in many cases, your entire body will become very hot, and uh, that is just merely an increase in, in a radiance that is emitting through every cell omnidirectionally through the body. The feet, the bottoms of the feet will get very, very, very hot as well. And the top of the head, and you may feel uh, as if you're wearing a bowl on the top of your head, and, you know, things of that nature. So you you can definitely feel it. Uh, it's like the um, head of a cobra. Um, you know, the expansion. Yeah, yeah, and, 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 I, and like I see where you're going with that because, you know, that the cobra is often a a, a, a symbol that is used in relation to the kundalini, uh, mostly from an Egyptian standpoint. That's called the uraeus, and you can look that up on Google, U-R-E-A-U-S. And uh, sure, sure, I mean, that's what happens when the kundalini comes up the spine, comes over the top of the head, and emits through the sixth chakra, or what other people know as the third eye, and that's the the snakes that you'll see coming out of Pharaoh's forehead is the uraeus, and that is an example of the kundalini that uh, that they used to, to awaken for their pharaohs, and they had certain ways of awakening it. A certain uh, suspension of disbelief in the process is helpful in the mental mind uh, for any kind of a healing to take place. But it is not absolutely necessary. Whether or not the individual receiving healing understands kundalini or not, the kundalini will initiate the healing. Uh, sometimes it's it's helpful if the person receiving the healing has no idea uh, where the healing is coming from or, or what uh, the healing consists of, uh, except to to give it permission, you know, to flow if it's a conscious uh, permission. So I just wanted to say that um, for deep healing or or deep tissue issues, uh, through the the kundalini expression in me, uh, the layers of the skin become visually peeled back and the flesh is is, uh, peeled away visually to expose a damaged area. And within that damaged area, a, a certain type of cellular change is initiated. And uh, it comes across, as, uh, for me, as different colors. And I can see where, say, for instance, a cancerous lesion is attached to uh, to a portion of the body. Well, that can come across as black. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I can just stand there and watch the replacement of that color with a color that is more uh, natural to what that mm-hmm. should be. And then uh, you know the uh, the layers of flesh and skin go back into place, and uh, 
and uh, the person doesn't feel any of this peeling back and, and doesn't actually sense it at all. But I, that is just how I'm able to, to go in and see certain areas. This includes any part of the body, uh, into the bone marrow, into the blood, into the uh, lymphatic or nervous mm -hmm. systems, into the lungs, into the cardiac chambers, and all of that. Uh, and basically, once again, you know, it is not chrism that is doing this healing. It is the kundalini that is doing the healing. Can you hear those birds in the background? Yes, I was going to oh, ask you. Oh, gosh, I'm <laughs> so sorry. No, uh, I love I mean, it. Well, yeah, but I'm sure other people don't. Uh, oh, my no, apologies, not... folks. My apologies. I, there's nothing I can really do. She's just Are they yellow birds? No, no. They're, they're the birds that, that the owner of the house has. And oh. They're what, nice what birds, of... but they just want to be heard. Oh, <laughs> I understand because I have a bird too. They just want what to be kind heard. of birds I'm so are they? Sorry, huh? <laughs> no, no problem. That's, that's oh, what kind that's of that's bird? Niki. That's that's Nikki. That's that's letting everyone know that she's there. She, she is a uh, Australian cockatoo, and oh. all of the birds <laughs> here are have been saved from from death. Oh, uh, oh and, really? Uh, so they're they're rescues, I guess, is what people call uh -huh. them. Uh -huh. Ninky was kidnapped from her native Australia by people who would trap them because they didn't want the the cockatoos coming in and eating the corn. So uh -huh. she was trapped, and she was used as a uh, as a you know if they're going to trap them, well they may as well sell them to the U.S. pet market, and that's what uh -huh. they did. And mm -hmm. The people got tired of her, and they lived to be about 80 years old. Oh, yes. So you can understand that they have a certain high level of consciousness. Yes. And she does. And uh, mm -hmm. and so she's just saying hello to everyone. Oh. Say hello back. <laughs> Inky? Minky. Minky. Yeah. Minky. Yeah. Oh, so sweet. Hi, Minky. <laughs> <laughs> I won't bring her out. <laughs> she would dominate the conversation. Oh, okay. No, uh, with regard we'll to the healing. Here. Yeah. What? We'll just get back on track. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, now, one of the one of the techniques that I use, and, and uh, some of the Kundalini active uh, people who are listening may also use this. It's a, the single touch of a of a Kundalini active finger can mm -hmm. do some serious healing for for a person. And basically, it's just the Shakti, since uh, it is emanating equidistantly from almost every part of the body, can bring a special frequency of healing Shakti into that finger. And typically, I will use the right index finger tip, and I will place it at the base of the neck. Uh, and, uh, and that will connect to the spinal column, and from the mm -hmm. spinal cord will radiate to basically every area of the body. And so, you know, you're not waving your hands over the person. You're not doing anything really dramatic. You're standing there and allowing a flow to be initiated and received. And the person just stands or lays there, sits there, and allows the flow to be received. Uh, we're not, this is not theatrics. You know, we don't need to, to shake the hand or move the hand all over the body. The clothing doesn't need to be removed. So, you know, issues of modesty can can remain intact. I mean, it is not about so much about the drama of, mm -hmm. of a healing being given as it is about an actual healing being given. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this isn't Grey's Anatomy. You know, uh -huh. Even though I haven't seen that show, I, I understand it's a medically oriented show. So. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, um, so... That that is how one that is I've given you just basically two of the ways that I uh, uh, have interaction with Kundalini regarding healing. Uh, Chrism, we you have a workshop coming up on May. Ah, yes. May second and third. Yes, I do, and uh, let me uh, give the people the information. Uh, this will be May second and third in Culver City, California. And this will be at a place called The Gateway, a portal for growth and wellness. And uh, to register, you can go to kundalini underscore seminar underscore registration at yahoo.com. Or, if you're interested, you can call area code 714-709-3550. And you'll talk with a gentleman named Krish. 
And uh, if you would like some more in information regarding that, you can go to www.kundaliniawakeningseminars.com, all one word, or to www.kundaliniawakeningsystems and the number one dot com. Mm -hmm. And what would they um, be covering? What would you be covering? Well, we'll get into a pretty. This is 16 hours. This mm -hmm. is 16 hours of, of experience and and information based upon the Kundalini. Okay, this is all about Kundalini. Mm -hmm. The first day, you know, we explain about Kundalini. We explain about the physiological explanation, the sacred explanation, the uh, the safeties. We go over the safeties of Kundalini uh, expression. Uh, we explain things uh, like the five Tibetans and meditation and forgiveness, gratitude, surrender, prayer, meditation. Uh, we talk about pranayama and tumo and feeling the energy and and what the uh, Buddhists call ecstatics and uh, uh, you know lots of the macrocosmic orbit, the microcosmic orbit, tantra, uh, you know, using tantra techniques and. Uh, the second day, you know, we actually we we're getting into the actual physical practice of what it is we're doing. Uh, we're we're doing the meditation, we're doing the prayers, we're doing the, uh, and then at the end of that half of the last day, the Sunday, then we're getting into direct Shakti Pod. Whereas I will come in, and if you agree, and I ask us a certain set of questions for each individual, and uh, you know. Uh, when those when that individual answers those questions, we, mm -hmm. a Shakti pot is initiated. However, it is initiated only along with the uh, person's agreement to practice the uh, the safety protocols for Kundalini awakening. And if they ref you know if, if they decide you know a week or two later not to practice it, well then the Shakti pot is is, is withdrawn. And I know this is different than what. All, you know, most of the other uh, Hindu uh, and, and Buddhist uh, Shakti gurus will do, but you know, one, the first time that I put raised blisters along a person's spine by giving them a Shakti pot, I decided that this was not going to occur again, and uh, mm -hmm. and I had a conversation with the Shakti and me, and and I needed, and I think the Western people need a set of protocols to follow that are specific to kundalini and for the safe awakening of the kundalini in the person and that is what has been initiated and that is what has been given and uh, through the years now it has proven to be very effective and very helpful in people that who who are seeking an activation and awakening and or who have already had it occur to them and yet they're having having something called kundalini syndrome which is a really difficult uh, experience with regard to kundalini and a person not being able to uh, function okay. within Western society with it. That's right. <laughs> Happens quite a bit. So. Yeah. So thank you. Yeah, awesome. thank you for letting me uh, uh, talk about the seminar there. Yeah. So um, people can – so it's two days, it's and they have days. to attend both days, right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. I'm not going to yeah. just – Come in and give somebody a Shakti pot without any information on what they're doing. <laughs> and set them free. Oh, my goodness. Right, yeah, that's just a mess. That, that's, a, that's a recipe for, for personal disaster, and I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm not going to do that. There is, however, an article in Vision magazine, uh, and this is available on the west coast of California, Hawaii, and Arizona, okay. and online at visionmagazine.com, and... and uh, you need to look for, and it's in this month, and uh, this is a free magazine, but it it, it talks about uh, it, things like what we're talking about today. It uh -huh. talks about kundalini, different spiritual modalities. And uh, you need to look into the chapter of Mind States and then Kundalini Healing, and it is there online, and, uh, and uh, so that can kind of... Well is it an online magazine or is it hard copy? It, it's hard copy and online. And oh, okay. So yeah, it, I thought I saw that at the health food store. Yeah, yeah, it is spelled Vision Magazine, just like you know the Eye Vision <laughs> Magazine, the uh, 
The uh, heading is Mind States, and then uh, under that uh, heading is Kundalini Healing, and it'll say by Chrism. Or I think it says by Master Chrism, and don't let that throw you. I'm really not uh, real attached to the whole Master title. thing. Yeah, uh-huh. the, yeah the, the title and all of that stuff that goes with it. But some people, in order to find veracity in an individual, need to see that in front of their name or behind their name, like, like an uh-huh. So do we have any questions? Anybody online for questions? Um, there, there are a few people online. Let me see. I just typed it in if you have any questions. So, yeah, uh, the single touch of a finger can do some pretty deep healing on a person. It can get rid of headaches. It can get rid of, you know, if a person's having migraines, that can really help. Also, uh, just a gentle uh, uh, standing next to a person in a hospital room Mm -hmm. can have have a great help on people. But once again, you need to have kundalini activated and in the process of awakening. The difference between an activation and an awakening is the activation is the initial uh, presence of kundalini in a body. The awakening is the maturation of that presence. Once an awakening is has occurred, there's no going back. Okay, then it's with the person for the for the rest of their life. And let's let's remember that this is a divine bridge between the physical, the mundane, and the divine. Okay, and that divinity has no boundaries in its reach and its effectiveness from a divine platform. Any healing can be given, even a resurrection from death. And knowing this, realize what endless possibilities you are part of in giving aspects of love as directed by the Kundalini within you into a healing vector for another person. Love is one of the strongest emanations of communication from the divine. When we love in an all-pervasive, non-judgmental way, we open ourselves as conduits for the divine nature to express itself through the vector of the kundalini. So always adopt a loving presence as much as you can with regard to the kundalini. And you will go into bliss. And uh, beyond bliss, you'll go into ecstasy. And these are very, very, very powerful expressions of love that the kundalini will will uh, bring a person towards. And if for some reason you, you cannot come from a from a loving presence then don't proceed with the healing don't do it you know if, and if you do do it then we can see that it's probably more about ego than it is about uh helping the other person okay so as you mature into the kundalini expression you'll begin to feel what exalted gifts are being given for the tasks of helping others and you don't want to rush this it takes time it takes time for the kundalini to be activated. It takes time for the infusion to change the cellular structure of all the cells in the body. All seven or so trillion cells in the body become changed. They adopt a, a different vibrational frequency, a different electronic charge. Keeping the ego in a learning format is one of the vital first steps in realizing uh, a, a specific frequency of kundalini uh, communication. Uh, this clears the, the conscious mind from over-mentalizing or, or developing desires based on uh, you know, self-gratification or self-aggrandizement or you know, feeding into the, uh, the desires that are amplified often with the Kundalini. So always start with a loving radiance and keep that discipline. You know, we're not here to save everybody from pain, sickness, or death. And while this can be done, it may not be appropriate in many cases. This must be understood. Even if you know the person, they're a friend of yours or, or a family member, okay? You know, typically you're not allowed to change a person's length of life through the intervention, through the intervention of an ego-oriented mo- modality. Right. We all uh, die. We all die. We have a question in the um, chat room. Yeah. Okay, how does one stay centered when participating in a social situation um, if they have an awakened kundalini? How does one stay centered within a social situation with awakened kundalini? Well, uh, the, the first thing that you want to do is you want to put the tip of your tongue behind your upper front teeth and that fleshy mound right there and leave it there. 
and leave it there as much as you can unless you're talking or eating or coughing or sneezing or kissing. You want to <laughs> yeah, you want to have the tip of the tongue behind the upper front teeth. This will greatly greatly reduce the amount of confusion, the amount of, uh, of unbalanced phenomena that a person may, may uh, yeah. endure during, uh, you know, uh, the first two or three years of kundalini infusion. Very important to do this. Um, if you don't do this, you know, you may watch your arms disappear, or your fingers disappear, or you may, you know, they'll just go out of phase. They don't actually leave you. They just go out of phase. You, they disappear for you. And, and that can be very disconcerting as you're having a piece of cake talking with your mother's friend. So <laughs> you want to keep the tongue up as much as you can. And uh, as much as you can outside of the social scenario, follow the protocols of safety for Kundalini. You can go you can go to uh, Kundalini Awakening Systems, the number one dot com, and it's in the left hand menu. Uh, it's uh, titled the Safeties. Uh, you can you can go to the MySpace site of Kundalini Awakening Systems, number one, and it'll be down there in the bulletin area. You can also join the Yahoo group or the MySpace group, and all of these groups have the Kundalini protocols for awakening uh, safeties. And uh, go through them. It, you know, it, it, it talks a lot about uh, surrendering your willful control over how the infusion of the Kundalini should take place. This is where a lot of problems come in because the person's ego wants to control the way it happens. Mm -hmm. And the Kundalini is far stronger than the person's ego. And yet the person's ego is in resistance and you have this... This uh, war that begins within the within the body, and that's that's just not healthy at all. And the Kundalini will always win, but the fear will become uh, greatly amplified. And this is the damaging areas. When the fear becomes amplified, then the person's uh, response to the Kundalini becomes a fear-based object, and then from there, Kundalini syndrome is sure to follow. Uh, mm -hmm. Paranoia. Uh, seeing uh, dark entities and living through fear and uh, aggressive uh, expressions of, of uh, fear and hatred and anger and frustration, et cetera, et cetera, and so on. So it, it'll just amplify whatever is already there. Well, yeah, yeah, to a degree, it does amplify what is already there. So this is why I say let's, you know, let's walk this path from the basis of love first. And a basis of surrender second. Okay. Would a person? Go ahead. I'm sorry. Would a person receiving um, the healing? Um, it, it won't necessarily work unless they have faith. You don't have to have faith. No faith necessary. No faith okay. is required. No belief is required. Mm -hmm. Nothing is required of the person receiving the healing, except that maybe some permission. And even then, if you're if you're just standing in the presence of a kundalini awakened person, then whatever it is that brought you into that presence, it, it's it's like this uh, scenario: though. a woman gets up and feeds the kids and gets them ready for school, packs the lunch, gets them all into the car. You know, by by uh, five minutes to eight, and and uh, along the route to the school, the tree branch falls and hits the car. Okay, everything that person did to get up at the time they did, to do everything at the amount of time they did to bring them to the to the confluence of the tree and the car, mm -hmm. they did. Okay. Right. It's the same with coming in the presence of a Kundalini awakened person. Okay. So uh if you're doing an intentional healing then yes, permission always needs to be given. If you're just standing next to somebody in the elevator and they receive the Kundalini and it and uh, from a loving vector a gracious vector, a vector of grace upon all that come into contact with that kundalini awakened person, then no permission is needed. It is an act of divine. Not everyone who um, has um, a kundalini awakened um, can actually um, do healing, though. No, not it, everyone gets it, that. It just depends on their own personal uh, propensities and... 
Uh, it just it depends on their karma. It depends on yeah. uh, what's occurred to them in their life to to mm-hmm. receive the kundalini. Typically, uh, a person will feel the energy just flow right out of them, mm-hmm. regardless of how their conscious mind is thinking. You could be sitting there eating a banana in a in a in a public cafeteria, and your kundalini will just pour into a person seated at the same table, about three tables down, or you know, a different table, three tables down. And you'll and you'll know where it's going. You'll see, you know, where it's going. And but it will pour out of your heart. It'll pour out of your hands. In many cases, it'll pour right out of your eyes, using the vision as a carrier wave. Mm-hmm. Vision has far more uh, uh, functions than than simply uh, identifying objects and feeding information to the brain. Mm-hmm. Vision itself is a thing. It is a carrier wave of frequency. And in this case, the vision will be a carrier wave for not only the frequency of kundalini, but for the frequency of love. You've, you've, you've seen people have loving looks towards another person or scenario. Mm-hmm. And the kundalini will ride that loving vision towards another person and deliver itself upon the object of the vision, of the ocular vision not talking about spiritual visions here. I'm talking about straight, physical, ocular vision. Ocular meaning eyes. Wonderful. And so, so, but let, let's, let's talk about pain a little bit here. Uh, pain is one of the best teachers. And love expressed through loss can create monumental pain. This is typically the the death of a spouse, or the death of a child, or the death of you know someone very close to you, and these lessons, and the lessons you know involved in that type of pain are extremely potent, and we must sacrifice our feelings and our limited understandings to the much broader information of the Kundalini Shakti. This is part of uh, releasing attachment, releasing the need to to uh, control. Uh, so it can, it can work miracles if those miracles are to be given, making us honored guests in the presence of divine intervention. And yet it can also stand back and allow a, uh, a family and a social group of friends to, to experience the loss that can occur through the death of a, of a person. And no judgment is being made here. It's just that we will die. That is part of our life cycle and we will come back again and and uh, you know learn from where we left off at this life with a whole new life and a whole new personality okay uh, people don't disappear they just change the names <laughs> change the names change the body uh-huh. so yeah oh, that's Fascinating. Um, No, they're just listening here. The other thing is, is I want you to to really realize that this is an inside-outside experience. Many faiths and religions and belief structures uh, talk about having a crystal next to you, or a certain type of mineral, or or a certain type of statue, or wearing a certain type of jewelry, or praying to a certain statue by looking at it right into its eyes, or, you know, and this, you know, this is fine, this is fine, but it's not needed. Mm -hmm. You don't need to wear a certain ring, you don't need to wear anything. You can be naked walking through a field and have kundalini. Mm -hmm. Probably not naked walking through the city. Okay, I don't (laughs) recognize that, you know, that's that. not something recommended. <laughs> but you can be naked in the environment and mm-hmm. barefoot and just walking natural and be far more, uh, uh, you can have a much better experience with the Kundalini rather than uh, shifting the seniority of your uh, spiritual awakening towards an implement or mm-hmm. a, 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 a thing an inanimate object or whatever. Now, yes, Kundalini can infuse inanimate objects. Uh, It can infuse, well, here's, for instance, for me, uh, I'll sit in a chair at the house or in the trailer, and 
uh, Lasha, my cat, will always come and want to sit there. And then all the other cats want to come and sit there too. And that's simply because the the Kundalini is there. I've had people lay their head where I sit, and they immediately have a, a huge buzzing sensation. And mm-hmm. so Kundalini will infuse inanimate objects, and I sometimes will give out inanimate objects, such as a little medallion or something that I have uh, Shaktipad, and that, that is effective. But don't pray to it. It isn't divinity. It is only an augmentation for the recognition of the divine person you are, the divine connection that, that each individual is. Uh, so, you know, my thoughts about uh, receiving uh, activation through statues and whatnot is not needed. It can happen sometimes, for sure, but it isn't needed. And um, uh, just, uh, prism. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in the chat room, see, Eileen has asked how you work with a group to heal a person. Oh, well, that's, that's, you know, that's very easy. You know, certain modalities are given. Um, sometimes uh, I'll use a diamond body uh, healing. Uh, mm-hmm. And from that diamond body, uh, each, you know, there's a person that re- represents each corner of a diamond. So that's six people. And then I'll have people, uh, and it also represents the directions. So we're moving into a little bit of the sh- shamanic natures here. And uh, we're, what we'll do is we'll start from the base of the diamond, and we will, we will these are called free radiating uh, uh, he- healing agents. And so basically you'll go to each corner of the diamond around the person in a clockwise motion, uh, spiraling to the top and giving at each direction and each each uh, point, diamond point, a certain frequency of emanation into that diamond point. Would know all these diamond points are connected, but as the uh, as the uh, the free radiating incursive agents go up through mm-hmm. and circle to the right and come out the top. Uh, all of the energies from the different directions and the different people and the different energetic frequencies coalesce into the middle of the diamond, which is where the uh, the patient rests. Mm-hmm. And we do that. And you can also go as a group and you can uh, pray for an individual. And you don't have to stand there in front of them. You can do this from a distance as a group. For instance, we do have healing conferences uh, uh, often. And uh, uh, nine or twelve, or however many people want to participate, will come together, and we will all uh, initiate breathing uh, practices. And uh, if you've ever, if you ever have read any of uh, Max Freedom Long's work with regard to Huna and, and what the Kahunas use for healing, well, that's just those are those are just those are Kundalini techniques called by a different name, and the same uh, with the uh, uh, the uh, I saw the other book. Uh, there was a book called Quantum Touch, and basically what that is is using uh, the the breath of the prana to be uh, uh, expanded by the breath and, and to learn how to direct that uh, pranic expansion through your arms, through your hands, into a person to initiate a healing. So we've been doing that lately too. Uh, basically, you know, this is this is just helping people. Feel energetic, uh, expanded energetic states, and initiating healings through those expanded energetic states. Chris, and we're going to go off the air shortly, so I just want to mention that um, uh, about just your workshop, real quick, coming up April. Uh, May, I mean, May, May second and third uh, in Culver City, Los Angeles, uh, at the Portal for Wellness and Healing. Uh, I'm sorry, a portal, the gateway, a portal for growth and wellness and in Culver City. And to register, it's kundalini underscore seminar underscore registration at yahoo.com or call 714-709-3550. Okay, yeah, that's We can come to kundaliniawakeningseminars.com or the kundaliniawakeningsystems1.com. Okay. We have um, just a few seconds left. Um, the show will be um, archived, so okay. any 
remaining time can be heard by uh, just loading or downloading the, the show. Okay. I guess it'll be ready in a couple of hours. But um, yeah, so it's uh, you know I actually um, got an opportunity to um, to meet Chris this past weekend, and you are um, you did a healing on a on a gentleman who had who suffered from back back pain. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah. you 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 and Anna and I did that. Yeah. Yeah, and, and how did he? Um, he needs he needs some more deep tissue treatment, and a lot of it is uh, is expressed towards his specific issue is because of how he sits at the computer and works. Yeah. And so until he is able to not so for instance, we'll give him a healing, and then he'll go back and just repeat the yeah, problem. Exactly. I have that problem too. So this is pointless. Yeah. You know, and, until exactly. changes until changes are are, are being. Are, are willing to be made by the individual receiving a healing, mm. then uh, you know there's no point. There's no point in it, and uh, and uh, so I I spoke to him about those changes that he needs to make, and okay. uh, we'll see if he does it. And as he does it, uh, we don't need to be there in his presence. We can just basically mm. either look at a picture or just feel, uh, uh-huh. remember the feeling of his presence and how that worked. Yeah. And there were a lot of other healings that were given there, too. But uh-huh. once again, uh, it's the radiance that heals it. Mm. Uh, some people have, you know, you know, they're very sensitive and they can feel it right off. And other people, you know, yeah. they, 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 you know, they have to work and they have to, to lighten themselves up a little, out of density in order to, mm-hmm. uh, to, to be able to feel these things. And once again, you know, there's no judgment made. Nobody's more spiritual mm-hmm. than another person. Right. You know, don't believe that. Uh, you're as spiritual as your priest or your monk or your counselor or your whoever and whatever kind of guidance you take for spiritual issues. You are just as spiritual as those people, and you're just as able to come into the knowledge of the divine as anyone, anyone in this world. Well, thank you so much for, for joining us. You're welcome, and thank you for having me, and I really appreciate the opportunity uh, that you give for people. Oh, there's one other thing. Since uh, Is this yeah. part of the archive? Yes. Are we archiving now? Okay. Yeah. I'd like everybody who is revisiting this conversation to uh, take a look at uh, a, uh, a uh, something that's coming up in Congress, and it is uh, H.R. 875. It is a bill to eliminate organic farming. I know, as strange as that may seem, you know, this, they're trying. This is a this is being put on by Monsanto, a pesticide company, and basically what they're doing is is they're trying to eliminate family farms and organic farming in order to perpetuate, you know, the the, the profit uh, mm-hmm. style of farming that they use and that they uh, they espouse. And they have this uh, going through Congress right at this moment. So if you can go ahead and write your congressperson and tell them to vote against the H.R. 875 bill. Uh, 875? Yeah, 875. And I say this because in the safety protocols, uh, you know, is the advice to eat organic food. Mm-hmm. You know, do not eat pesticide-ridden food if you can at all help it. And if you have no organic food to eat and you are not allowed to grow your own organic food in your yard, which this is also covering, then you're going to, you know, there may be some problems for you. So please talk to your congressperson and have them eliminate the bill, H.R. 875. So they're actually advocating that you use their chemicals. Exactly. Well, they're actually advocating that they use the chemicals that will damage your body. So. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. Well, it's it's just it's, it's yeah. It's amazing what you know people wow. with control I, issues want to do. Exactly. It's just mind-boggling. Oh. Yeah. So that's a, this is a very you know and and these and, incursive these incursive uh, uh, these in, these incursive laws uh, towards. Uh, control of the populations are going to continue as we continue towards uh, 2012. 
Yeah. And uh, this will this will expand into areas of uh, personal liberties and things of that nature. So don't be too surprised when you when you see these things taking place. It's it's just uh, it leaves me speechless. It's just hard to. Yeah, yeah. I thought that was kind of a brazen attack. Uh, you know, wow. For the for the sake of control and profit. Yeah, exactly. And coming from a farming background, my my family, uh, we were farmers in the uh, in in northwestern Yellow County, and uh, and I know firsthand uh, what chemicals, pesticides do to the wild environment around mm-hmm. them where they're sprayed. And basically, you see animals going into paroxysms of pain oh. and, and dying. And these are wild wild animals that oh. have nothing to do nothing to do with the farming operation. Nothing at all. They're not eating the crops. They're not mm-hmm. destroying anything. These are owls, and these are these are uh, beavers, and you know these are different different kinds of uh, fish and insects, mm-hmm. butterflies. I'll tell you what, oh. it, it, the butterflies between the the, the the early 70s and right now they've been cut in half. So so really kind of be a, a aware of these types of things. You are your environment, and so. As as they poison the land, they poison you too. Yes. So do your best to to support yes. the organic farming and plant your own garden while you still can. Would you um, post something on Karma Cafe about that? Yeah. Or I'll write it and send it to me, and I'll, I'll post it. Sure, sure, not a problem. Yeah. Yeah. All righty. Well, thank you, Shandi. Thank you for having me, and thank you for, oh, for, thank for having you. this program and reaching the people that you reach. Oh, thank you so much for sharing, and we really appreciate it. Thank you so much. So have a beautiful rest of the week, and um, join well, us all again. Talking with you next month. Yeah, great. <laughs> okay, take care then. Thank you, Shandi. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> thank you for joining us, everyone, and we'll see you next week. Same time, same station. And check out the karmacafe.com, K-A-R-M-A-C-A-F-E.com for um, all the latest um, events. And you can read a couple of articles up there um, by CRISM. We have a a nice video there as well um, that was put together with um, myself as well as um, Manatee Healing. it's very beautiful. And actually, it, I think the one that's up is Kundalini. So you might enjoy that as well. So I'll see you all next week. Thank you so, so, so much. Namaste.